And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Logical, Plausible, Probable. In this video, I'm gonna analyze if the Darwinian worldview has destroyed the ability of the new atheist movement to actually do critical thinking, and if they really put their positions to the test of being logical, plausible, and probable. Now before we get into it, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon if you actually want to get notified when the new videos go live. So it's been pretty interesting reading through the comments on my last couple of videos talking about Darwinism and its application to the atheist worldview. Now judging from the nearly synonymous responses from so many different people, it seems they have either not actually watched the videos before going on commenting diatribes, or if they have watched it, are incapable of actually understanding the points being made. Now since the average watch time has been between two and four minutes, depending on the video, I'm going with they haven't actually watched them. This has led me to wonder if the fragility of the atheist worldview has reached such a level. The only way to maintain it is to just shut off critical thinking and true internal analysis of their own beliefs. I mean, just think about it. If all these atheists are screaming about how Darwinism and the concept of evolution versus intelligent design has zero impact on their worldview, how do they explain things like social Darwinism, evolutionary psychology, philosophy, epistemology, linguistics, and so on that are all formally recognized disciplines, all of which are ultimately dependent on Darwinism being true. They may claim Darwinism doesn't affect their non-belief in God, but they use many of those disciplines as explanations for elements of life that appear designed. This goes all the way to many of them taking the position that the entire concept of morality is subjective based on its evolution and there being no external source of it. Now, how is this defended? Well, if you actually listen past their subjective points about how society has changed positions on different things being considered moral and immoral, this argument is dependent on us being, well, nothing but smart animals. And it requires the suspension of all considerations regarding the duality of body and mind. What does this mindset depend on? Naturalism. What does naturalism rely on? The removal of a need for a higher power in order for life to exist. How is this explained? Well, most of the new atheists, Darwinian evolution. This expands into dogmatic materialism, not accepted by all atheists, of course, but definitely spouted by the most active. But if you read their comments, watch their videos, and listen to their debates, you will notice how forcefully they claim that Darwinism had zero effect on how they became atheists, all while refusing to consider how their entire worldview is dependent on it. Now for a quick caveat to see if the atheists who are going to comment on this actually watched the video. I wanna be clear, I am not saying every single one of you thinks in this exact fashion. Obviously, nobody thinks the exact same way as the next person, so please don't leave ridiculously long comments about how this doesn't describe you exactly. This is an examination of a general worldview. So if you actually think that I am putting you inside of a 100% box, then you're kind of proving my point about having the lack of critical thinking skills. Now I talked about how Darwinism alters the atheist worldview in my last couple of videos in regards to potential evidence for an intelligent designer, but let's look a little bit deeper into how this impacts thought process on a much larger scale. I think this is exemplified by the words of one of the most staunch and outspoken atheists of all time, Richard Dawkins. He said, Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. Now, why is that? Per his own admission, basically everything about biology has the illusion of design. Such an appearance of this that he and many other atheists encourage their followers to not allow common sense to fool them. Now let's apply this to basic thought processing and reaching conclusions based on what is most logical, plausible, and probable. 
If a fundamental element of your worldview requires suspension of the exact cognitive abilities needed to reach any other conclusion, how is it remotely logical to conclude this premise would not have broad ranging effects? If what you believe regarding your very existence is completely counterintuitive in relation to everything that surrounds you, everything you observe and instinctively recognize as true, how then can your conclusions about what qualifies as evidence not become incredibly biased? If everything about your worldview demands a subjective interpretation, how then can you actually suspend this subjective mindset regarding things that require objective conclusions? I would argue that you cannot. Of course, it is my position that humans are hardwired to think rationally, but if your thought processes are filtered through a worldview that you know, requires there to be no purpose to existence external to our finite time in this mortal form, how can decision-making be anything other than myopic and ultimately short-sighted if you believe there is nothing beyond this plane of existence? This is exemplified by the focus of all aspects of science on the Darwinian worldview. Just think about the billions of hours spent by genius researchers over the last century searching for a natural, undirected origin of life. Everything shows it is not possible by undirected natural processes, yet they continue to insist there must be a way. Not only does this require suspension of objective experimentation, what other discoveries would have been made if the requirement of an intelligent agent was accepted? These men and women of incredible intellect focus on figuring out how something could happen by chance rather than looking for how it was designed. They even freely admit that life is dependent on the most complex systems ever conceived and that these are vastly superior to the most advanced human-created technologies. Then they forcefully argue how an intelligent agent is not a possible variable to be considered. I find it ironic how the term reverse engineering is so often used by researchers in their formal papers only to be concluded and summarized with how it must have just evolved without an engineer uh, through purely natural processes. Now bringing this all back to the worldview and critical thinking ability of atheists, it forces you to wonder if this madness is happening in the minds of those we consider elite intellectuals. How is it also being leveraged by us mere mortals in regards to rational analysis of our very existence? By removing any premise of absolute truth and external forces being essential to our very existence, everything can now be viewed through a subjective lens and interpreted in whichever fashion fits their worldview. Any argument in favor of God can now be explained away by a firm belief in the gods of chance and natural selection. Many who watch this video will view my case against the critical thinking skills of atheists as a personal insult but nothing could be further from the truth. I am making these arguments in an attempt to help open your eyes and, and to recognize how your minds have been clouded by your desperate attempt to escape your own rational thoughts about our existence. I wager there is no human who in moments of solitude does not contemplate their very ability to consider these questions. There is so much more to your life than this brief time in the mortal coil. Do not waste it. That's it for this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to get notified when new videos go live, make sure to click the little bell icon. Also, let me know if there's any other topics you'd like for me to tackle in the comment section. But please make sure those topics are logical, plausible, and probable. For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started.